Hi guys, so the whole EVO team is now in Thailand for EVO Enduro. Um, I've had to sit out of that and today I am here at Wanutama and uh, I'm checking this out. Here, 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 so here, here. here we are, this is the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350+. Plus. So when you say the EQE, this is the E-Class size electric vehicle, full electric vehicle from Mercedes, okay? So in the Mercedes EQ family, you have the EQA, you have the EQB, EQC. These are based on the GLA, GLB, GLC. You have the EQS, which is not based on the S-Class, but an S-Class sized EV. Right here, this is the EQE. So this is in, in essence, an E-class size EV, all right? And you can see from the badge here, it says here EQE350+. Plus. So the 350 plus, well, denotes the positioning or the, uh, the power rating of the car, all right? So you're looking at this car. This, this is the only variant of the EQE for sale in Malaysia, right? It, it packs 292 horsepower and has a maximum rated cruising range of up to 670 kilometers. So 292 horsepower, right? This puts the EQE roughly at the same kind of power rating as your E350 or your C350 uh, regular petrol model, right? That 290 to 300 horsepower bracket. All right, so that is the background of the of the EQE and of course pricing. This is priced at four hundred and twenty thousand ringgit. So what are the alternatives? If you look at BMW, four hundred and thirty thousand ringgit gets you the i four M, okay, which is uh well, which is a segment down in terms of of body size, but up in terms of power basically it is the m4 la, of electric vehicles so so uh of course if you talk about the regular i bmw i4 is about three hundred and seventy thousand ringgit so in terms of pricing wise the eqe is spot on because uh there is no other alternative in the market anyway so the uh, i bmw i4 is the closest reference model all right which is one segment down Okay, and uh, yeah, so it is think of it as the, the, the relationship, be, the pricing relationship between say an E class versus a BMW M340R or M440R. Okay, so the front end of the EQE, this follows the well, the current Mercedes EQ template design. So there's no grill, all right, and you wouldn't expect them to have the classic uh, grill, classic grill with the star on the bonnet because that is detrimental to aerodynamics so you have this black plastic power that simulates your visually simulates the old style grill and you have the large central star here all right and check out the detail of on these lights this nice light here so it's it's a very simple uh you know two line illumination but the detail on the element here it's just marvelous mercedes calls this digital light all right very very nice set and uh the overall frontal end design i would say it's it's, an, it's a very amg sportish bumper uh, no fuss okay uh you can check out the front bonnet look at that the front bonnet okay it nicely cuts down here to the wheel arch and up the side mirror okay interesting story about mercedes side mirrors right so you see mercedes has a convention whereby the regular sedan models or regular four-door models right they have their side mirrors built to the base frame of the a pillar the more sporty the coupe-ish models like your e-class coupe c-class coupe cls have their side mirrors rise from the door so you can see this EQB here for example the side mirror comes out from the base of the A pillar whereas here in the EQE 
the side mirror comes out from the door so that uh, that denotes Mercedes's intentional positioning of this as something of a coupage model and that is reinforced with the frameless door design now check out the interior this is new generation Mercedes interior you can see with the uh, portrait screen in the middle and they have the uh, the others cluster there digital cluster there so unlike the previous gen e-class where they have the one wide spanning screen all right so now they split the screen back but there's now more screen real estate here right here in the middle cut once again current gen mercedes design all right down there that is very useful guys a nice big tray underneath and you can see here wow there is a lot of space available because you don't need to house like a like a transmission tunnel all right so all this is very very effectively maximized as storage space wow you can see look at that way so this goes all the way deep inside and here there's a little even a strap here all right to hold your things in place usb-c ports there as well and i like that this is rubberized okay rubberized you can and you can remove this rubber for cleaning purposes very neat okay here there is a, a, a gap here all right so here the door card check out this door card now um i like i like the design of this door card so this i like how they make this right sort of like a cantilever kind of design now behind here of course there's a there's a brace to reinforce that but i like how it looks like it, it floats out okay all right that gives the the, the whole construction that look of strength and uh, there's this exquisite Burmester speaker here at, uh, at the door. Oh my God, it is hard plastic. Okay, <laughs> it is hard plastic. Eh? That's that's a that's a bit of a shock. So the front passenger also has memory, and it's touch. All right, this is this is this is touch sensitive. You've got heating function as well. All right, seat adjustment here, typical Mercedes style. Very nice, very neat looking. But this is hard plastic, huh? surprisingly, from Mercedes, hard plastic. Door card here. The, the door bin is like, what, two-thirds its length. Okay. So you can see from the floor mat, AMG trim on this. So press this, and the door comes out. So you can see the inside. Check this out, guys. And I am 170 centimeters tall. I've got what four fingers of headroom above me. Good lean angle. All right. Uh, thigh support doesn't go all the way to the back of my knee, but leg room is respectable. And they have carved out this section to give you uh, a better uh, leg room here as well. So here you can see rear air vents, also touch type climate control functions. And up here, wow, this is not a cup holder, guys. Check this out. So this is like a slot, okay, which I believe you can use this to to dock your phone, I suppose. Or maybe there is an extension here, which uh, which you can put here to hold a cup holder, right? Uh, so here, the B pillar goes. So one piece goes all the way down to about here where there's pl it's plastic so the cloth finish the fabric finish goes down to about here and this is taken over by the hard plastic all right uh the material selection here this is the alcantara and and oh check this out i like that this panel here has a bit of a floating design very very nice very very nice indeed so we'll get a closer look at the driver's seat Okay, now uh, I can't start the car, but now this, the, uh, the power window switches, this is new generation. This is not taken from the Mercedes parts being that we're familiar with, so that's good. All right, and uh, you can see the, the steering wheel. Okay, this has been with Mercedes 
I think for the last couple of years now, all right, a very aggressive looking steering wheel and see how the central, the three-pointed star practically dominates the central hub, all right? And uh, the controls here are all touch sensitive. So yes, you have the, there's the tactile part of it where you can press in, but the way it's structured, okay, is also meant to respond to you touching the thing, all right? And uh, Mercedes has obviously given consideration to the fact that you need to operate these without taking your eyes off too too long. So they have the grooves, they have all these grooves built into it so that you can feel your way around it, okay? There's also pedal shifters, which I do not know why you would need pedal shifters for an electric vehicle that has no gears, all right? So, but there's the transmit the, the gear the movement the gear selector you have reverse drive park and uh, the signal stop here at the side so the look at this this nice metallic uh, surface here and the the air con vents are nicely neatly integrated so as that it looks almost hidden but it's up here okay and here we have the screen Okay, nice crisp graphics as we have come to expect from Mercedes. Okay, so we have seen the, the storage spaces here. No need to go over them again. But yeah, here's the driver's seat. Now, just a, a quick comment on the overall construction of this. Um, you see, there is very minimal amount of switch gear here. And this is, this is a, a new automotive trend, all right? switches traditional switches are making way for screens okay and the sc and screens and this is a very clever thing because screens give you the perspective uh, the, the perception that it's an expensive interior all right so you can see here this is touch sensitive okay but what the manufacturers do not tell you is that when they remove the buttons they don't have to engineer the tactile feel of each button Okay. everything is touch everything is touch so the see when for car makers like especially like mercedes level right, the tactile feel of your switch gear is extremely important and now with the screen you take away the knee or rather you substantially reduce the knee to engineer all that okay which is in my books very very clever now we'll check out the boot powered rising and you can use this to remote release the split folding rear seats boots nicely sized and uh, probably won't take your golf bags but underneath here that's the battery hybrid battery together with the tire repair kit and we shall close this all right so guys here you have it this is the mercedes-benz eq e350 and the crew now here they're actually standing by to close it so i've got to end the video here right now